exam to review. Exam two, review, question five. Well, question five says prove that, prove that, and, fa and minus one factorial, and minus one factorial is greater than n squared, n squared and n, must be greater than equals to six. Okay, first of all, recall that since we are going to use factorial, recall how we define factorial. Factorial is defined this way. We take the consecutive numbers and multiply them together starting from one. We have one times two times three times and we sum at number like n, and we write it in short format, n factorial. We put exclamation mark next to it, and we call it n factorial. Okay. So you might say, well, if you define it this way, we can use the exact same definition and rewriting n factorial as. So think about it this way: we have one times two times three dot 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 before n you have n minus one n minus one times n which is equal to n factorial you can take one times two times three times n minus one and this is by definition of n factorial is equal to n minus one factorial so n factorial can be written also as n minus one factorial times n. Well, what if I want to define one times two times three times n plus one? So if I have one times two times three times n plus one, I know by definition this is n plus one factorial, but do I have any other method to write this in nicer form? Before n plus one, you have n. So this guy is actually one times two times three times n times n plus one. Well, this guy is just n factorial. I already know that. So n plus one factorial can be written as n plus one factorial can be written as n factorial times n plus one. You can continue this process. You can just start manipulating this factorials n plus two factorial is n plus two times n plus one factorial and so on. So there are not some basic rules. You can just rewrite this based on the need in your theorem or in the question that you have. So question says prove that n minus one factorial is greater than n squared. Okay. So Direct definition, contradiction, contrapositive, induction. Well, I have n and I have inequality here. Let me try using induction. Proof by induction. So remember that when you're trying to prove by induction, you have a very base step. If the base step works, you move on to inductive step. So base step. Base step says, hey, this statement that we call it Pn, so this statement that we call it Pn must be true for the smallest value in your domain, which is six. Check if P 
P of six is true. Okay, P of six, it means that if I plug in six for N, six minus one factorial must be greater than six squared. So it means that six minus one factorial is greater than, so let me put a question mark on top of it because I don't know it. I'm trying to investigate to see if this is true or not. So on the left-hand side, I have five factorial. What is five factorial? Five factorial is one times two times three times four times five times five factorial. Is this guy greater than six times six or 36? Okay, perfect. So if I multiply these numbers together, I have six times 20, okay, 120, which is greater than 36. So I'm happy about my very base step. It gives me the path to move on to inductive step. So inductive, inductive step. Well, inductive step says, now suppose this statement is true for any number less than equals to n, prove it for one step after that. So let pk is true. What's the meaning of pk? It means that k minus one factorial is greater than k squared. Show that p k plus one is true. It means that we need to show that this is what we're trying to prove. k plus one minus one factorial is greater than k plus one raised to the second power is true. So this is our goal. We need to show this in equality, and we have this fact that k minus one factorial is greater than k squared. Okay, well, what do I have here? I have k plus one minus one factorial, and I know I can manipulate this guy writing it in other format. Okay. Let us start by k plus one minus one factorial. Okay, this guy can be written as just k factorial, am I right? If you just add and subtract these two, this is nothing but k factorial. Note that you have something that you want to use eventually. What is that? It is k minus one factorial. Note that n factorial is the multiplication of n times n minus one factorial. So this guy can be written as k times k minus one factorial. Well, this is my inductive step. This is my inductive step that I already know it is true. I know k minus one factorial is greater than k squared. So, so far I know this guy is greater than k minus one factorial is greater than k squared. And I have to just copy k, it is k times k times k squared, k squared, okay. So k times k squared is nothing but k cubed, all right, k cubed. This is k to the third power. Very well, this guy, is also greater than k plus one, k plus one to the second power.
But why is true? If you don't remember this inequality from algebra, you can also use induction to prove it for yourself. K cubed is greater than K plus one to the second power. Also remember that if you graph these, these are the same as the graphs that you use in calculus. So Y values, the Y value for this function is greater than the Y value for this function. Think about it this way. Here you have K cubed. Just recall the graphs. K cubed, similar to y equals to x cubed. The behavior is the same. And remember that here your k is greater than or equal to 6, so your x is greater than or equal to 6. And the second one is x plus 1 squared. So k plus 1 squared. We can say that hey, it's the graph in continuous form is similar to x plus one squared. Okay. Again, note that you are working with positive x values. Take a look at these graphs. So some numbers up there. So this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. So if you think about the graph of y equals to x cubed, the graph is like this. So again, you don't need the negative part for just remembering and visualizing this. This is going to be this right here. So if you plug in one, again, note that this starts from six. So we need to plug in six. But just for a moment, think about one. If I plug in one here, my y value is equal to one. And if I plug in one here, I get uh, four. So if x is less than equals to six, the graphs they overlap at some point, and this guy is larger than this. That's why we have to restrict this to six and greater numbers. Well, let me see. So at six, we're going to have 49. Okay. And this guy is going to be very huge. So the graph of this guy behaves like this. This is the graph here. So this is your y cube. It's y equals to x cube. And this guy is x plus 1 squared. x plus 1 squared. As you can see, your y values, the speed of x cube is much faster than the speed of x plus 1 squared. That's why x cubed is greater than x plus 1 squared, or k cubed is greater than k plus 1 squared for k greater than equals to 6. Well, question 2 says, Question two, prove for each natural number that the sum one plus two, is it two? No, it's four. One plus four plus seven plus the rest of them three n minus two is equal to n times three n minus one divided by two. Perfect. Okay. Let us try using induction. Prove by induction. Well, so remember that we have a base case. If the base case 
is true, we can go to the next step. So base step. So let us call this guy statement PN. This is our PN, which says, hey, the sum one plus four plus seven plus three and minus is equal to this fraction. A step says, hey, show that P is true for the smallest value in the domain, which is one. So show that P of one is true. It's true. Let me put a question mark next to it because I'm trying to prove that. Okay, on the left hand side, what do I have? On the left hand side, if I plug in one, I get one. On the right hand side, I have one times three minus one divided by two, which is equal to one. So left hand side, right hand side, they both are equal to each other. Now let's move on to inductive step. Inductive step. It says, hey, now that your base step is true, suppose this statement is true for k any number less than equals to. So suppose we have one plus four plus seven plus dot 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 three k minus two equals to this fraction here, k times 3k minus 1 divided by 2. We show that it is true for the next step. It means that pk plus 1. So suppose pk is true. We show that pk plus 1 is also true. But we need to put a question mark next to it because we are trying to prove this equality. We're going to show that one plus four plus seven plus three. Now, wherever I see k, I use k plus one. Here I have k times three. So I'm going to put this k plus one into parentheses because I have to distribute three. Minus two is equal to this fraction which is a bit more space. Let me just erase this a little bit. One plus four plus three times K plus one minus two is equal to, so now wherever I see k, I plug in k plus one. So I have k plus one times three times k plus one minus one divided by two. This is what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove this. Very well. So let's rewrite this guy trying to write this in a form that we can eventually use the inductive step. So this guy, this is one plus four plus dot 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 plus one term before this term. It means that my k plus one was actually k. So I had three k minus two plus 3k plus 1 minus 2. Okay, so by inductive step, I have this sum. This sum is equal to this fraction. Pk is true, so I'm going to use substitution here. I'm going to substitute this fraction for this sum here, which gives me k times 3k minus 1 divided by two. But I have, at the same time, I have another term. Let me write this term down here, which is 3k plus 3 minus 2, which is 3k plus 1. Now take common denominator between them. The common denominator is 2. So I have 3k 
squared minus k plus 6k plus 2. Okay, here I get 3k squared. Um, then I have 5k plus 2. Um, can you say that again, the step, please? So, as you can see, 3k squared plus 5k plus 2 is the compact form on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, what we try to show, to show that this compact form, this fraction is equal to this fraction, but k plus 1 times 3k plus 2 is equal to 3k squared plus 5k plus 2 which is exactly the same as my numerator here. So these two stars are the same. It means that left-hand side and right-hand side are equal to each other. So we just prove this by induction. 